Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we have a 2001, it's a Toyota Corolla and we're going to be changing the front brake pads and we are going to change the rear brake shoes. Uh, we are going to change the rotors as well at the same time but I'll, I'll bring you in there and I'm going to show you why. Um, Alright, here's an example of what kind of tools we're going to be needing. Um, we're going to need a, a, a ratchet. For the, the longer the ratchet the better because you get more leverage to break the bolts loose. We're going to need an assortment of metric sockets to, uh, to take the bolts out. We're going to need a hook or a piece of wire or something to support the caliper while we're working. A couple of different screwdrivers. Something to clean off rust, whether it's a file or a scraper or even emery cloth, you can use that as well. Uh, we do have some brake lube that we're going to grease everything up so it slides nice and freely. We are going to use some brake cleaner to clean off the new rotors that we're going to be replacing because the rotors are actually covered with an oily film. We're going to do that. And of course something to keep our nuts and bolts in so that we don't lose them. This is a magnetic tray so that's, uh, that's what I'm going to use. Um, and of course we're going to use new brake pads once we get the new rotors on there as well. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come inside right through here and we're going to push that brake piston back into the bore as far as it'll go and then we're going to take this caliper off. Alright, so uh, let's grab some tools and let's get started. Okay, so I just want to explain something to you. You'll see I have two bolts right here and you're probably wondering what these bolts are for. These bolts are if the rotor is stuck on the car and you can't get it off, whether it's the rotor or if it's a rear drum, you can use these bolts to get that, that rotor off. What you would do is take the bolt and you screw it into the rotor right in through here and then you would tighten it in and it would pop the rotor off if needed. So we'll see how that goes now. Alright, so now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in with a big screwdriver like this. We're going to come in the back over here and we're going to put the screwdriver in just like this through here, just like that. And we're going to pry very loosely and you see the piston starting to push back in. What we're doing now is we're checking to make sure that the slide pins are okay and that the piston pushes back into the bore all the way. Alright, so now that we have it pushed back in, we can see that it's in as far as it'll go. And these pins here, it's very important that these slide pins slide back and forth freely. So we're going to check it now to make sure it does. And you can see they slide back and forth nice and freely. So we know that this mounting bracket is good. So we're not going to have to do anything as far as changing the caliper or the mounting bracket. Alright, next thing we're going to do now is we're going to take out these two bolts right here. They're usually 14 millimeters. So we're going to get on here now. Now I want to point this out to you as well. When you're working underneath here, make sure you have cardboard or something underneath it so you're not making a mess in your garage. Alright, when you know that it's counterclockwise to remove it, clockwise to put it back on. And you break both bolts loose on the caliper first before you, uh, before you remove one. You break them both loose. Otherwise, if you break one bolt loose, suppose you broke this one loose here and you took this bolt here all the way out. And now you get on here with the ratchet and you try to turn this. What's going to happen then is the entire caliper is going to move up. That's why you break both of these loose first before you take them out. Alright, so we'll take these out. And we're going to hold on to these because we don't want to lose them. So we'll put them on a magnetic tray. Now these, these pieces right here, these slide pins, you see how the slide pin here is flat on the one side? You see how they're flat right there? Watch how you take it out because that flat piece needs to go right back up against this flat piece right here. Okay? It cannot be turned this way where it interferes with it because then the bolt don't line up and you'll never get it in. So it needs to be this way flat like that so that the flat part here fits up against the flat part there. Alright? Now we're going to take our caliper out. You never want to let a caliper hang by itself so you use a hook. Put a hook on it, hold it up here and you can pick it up and out of the way. So that way it's just supported up and out of the way just like that. Alright, so this brake pad here is coming off. As you can see, there's really not a heck of a lot left on there. It's very thin. Same thing over here. Take this one out like this. And that's not as thin, but we're going to put this off to the side as well. 
Next thing we're going to do is going to take out this bolt here and this bolt here so we can remove this mounting bracket from the car. That's usually around a uh, 17 or 18 millimeters and this one is actually 17 millimeters. Remember it's counterclockwise off, clockwise on. All right. And you want to have a very long ratchet. The longer the ratchet, the easier it is to break the bolt loose. Again, you break it loose and you do not take it out. Same thing here. And now once you have both bolts broken loose, then you could take them out. Again, don't lose these because you're going to need to use them over again. All right, we're going to put this down for a minute. Now, sometimes the rotor comes off, sometimes it doesn't. This one is going to come off. I could feel it moving a little bit, so we just pull it off. But if it didn't pull off, what you would do is just take this bolt, you screw it in here, and then you get on here with your socket, and then you would turn this in, tighten it up, and when you tighten it up, that bolt will pop the rotor off by pushing through the back over here. But that's not the case here. It came off fairly easy, so we don't have to worry about that with this one. But if it did stick, that's the way you would do it. All right, so we're going to put this off to the side for a second. And now this is totally disassembled. We're going to come in right on the face over here. And you can see there's no rust on here whatsoever. But if there was rust on the part of the hub itself, you need to get in here with a scraper such as this and clean off any rust that you have in there. This is very clean, so I don't have to worry about doing anything here. But like I said, if yours was, you would take either emery cloth to it or you would take the scraper to it and make sure you get that rust off. I also have a tool that we go on here with. It goes over the top of it. It's air powered or you can put it on a drill and you can clean up this with a, with a circular disc. I'll put a link on my Amazon store so you can take a look at it and see what that piece looks like and you can clean this up really well. All right, so now that we have that done, we're going to come over to our new rotor here. We're going to take some brake cleaner and we're going to spray this down, clean it off a little bit, and then we'll wipe off all of that grease on there. So let me grab a rag and we'll come right back. Okay, so now either you can spray it on here or you can spray it on your rag, whichever works for you. Just spray it lightly and you can clean off any kind of grease that's on there. You do not have to get everything off of there. If you leave a little bit on, it's not a big deal. It may smoke a little bit, but that's all. All right, so we're going to spray it down a little bit here. We're going to clean it off again. And that's getting the majority of the grease off of it. But like I said, don't go crazy. You get most of it off, that's good enough. All right, now one more thing before you put this back together. This is very important. You want to take your rotor, leave it on the, on the ground where it's flat. Put the rotors side by side and make sure that the rotors are the same height this way. Very important. Then you take your rotor and you turn it over. You take your replacement rotor and you stand it on top of it. And you make sure that the outside diameter around here is exactly the same. And this one is exactly the same. So we know that this rotor, it is the correct rotor. I can't tell you how many times uh, I would get people that would send me rotors from the parts stores and they're the wrong ones. So it's very important to make sure that you have the correct rotor height and the correct rotor width. Even if it's off a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch, that's going to be significant and it may wind up hitting into the bracket itself. All right, so, uh, all right, let's get this back together now. We're going to take the old rotor away. Get it out of the way because we don't need it. We'll get our replacement. is on there like this. Now you can see how the rotor is loose here. It moves a little bit. Sometimes it's a little bit of an issue when you're trying to put the bracket back on. So let me show you a trick that I do. Okay, what I do is put the rotor on like this. Just put a very large nut on it. 
or washer, whatever you have, screw this on, and now the rotor doesn't move any place, it's held on just like this. Alright? Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to just take out the uh, we're going to take out the, the slide pins here and we're going to lubricate them and clean them. And the way you do that is you hold it by the rubber here and you take the, the slide pin and you rotate it and pull it out while pulling the boot back so that your boot doesn't rip. Okay. Now we're going to clean off all of that excess, excess grease on here. We're going to spray our rag and you just go on here and you clean off all of that extra grease that's on there. Very important that you get this out of here because you're going to lubricate it with clean grease and you don't want to contaminate it. All right. Now what I recommend to everybody is to only do one slide pin at a time because this slide pin here may be different than this slide pin. So just do one pin at a time, that way you don't make a mistake and put them in the wrong way. We're just going to take a little bit of synthetic grease, put it on here like this, and then we're just going to spread it around. It doesn't have to be a lot, just a little bit, just like that. Like this. And now we'll take our caliper, put it in the caliper mounting bracket, put it in, rotate it, and push it in, and you want to make sure that that rubber boot snaps up onto the top right up here. I'll show you. Just like that. The boot has to sit back up on the metal, just like that. All right, and you see now it slides nice and freely. Now we're going to do the exact same thing over here. Hold the boot, take the slide pin out, just like this. Now we have brake cleaner on here ready, so we're going to clean off that grease that's on here like this. Okay, so it's nice and clean now. Remember what I told you about the two pins looking different? You see this one has got the rubber on the end of it, so this one is different than the other one that we had just taken out. We're going to put a little bit of lubricant on here like this. And then we're going to spread this around on here. We are not going to put anything on this end up here. We're just going to lubricate over here, just like that, and a little bit here on the rubber to make it slide. Like I said, you don't want to put any grease on this end over here, okay? You take this and push it in and rotate it at the same time. Push it, and you'll see that that boot should pop back up, but it didn't, so push it a couple of more times and pull it until it snaps up all the way just like that, and that's it. Now normally I would be changing this hardware right here, but these particular brake pads did not come with the hardware, so we are not going to change this. We're just going to lubricate this and put this back together. All right, so let me change my gloves and uh, then we're going to continue. All right, now we're ready to, uh, to make sure we have the correct brake pads. So you want to take your brake pads and you want to match them up to make sure that they're the correct brake pads. Make sure that the thickness of the metal bracket here is the same and make sure the pad itself is the same. Sometimes the material on the brake pad itself may differ, but the metal should always be the same. All right, so these are the correct brake pads, so we know that we are correct. We're going to take the old stuff and we're going to get rid of it. We're going to put it off to the side. And now we're going to take our new brake pads and uh, put them right here. We're going to take our mounting bracket we did take a rag and clean off any of the excess grease or dirt that was on here. And now we're going to lubricate it. We're going to put a little bit of lubricant. Every place that the brake pad is going to touch, we're going to put a little bit of lubricant in here. I'll do this and I'll show you what I mean. You just put a little bit in here like this and you rub it around just like that. Okay? Same thing up here and here. All right? So this is lubricated now. Now we're going to take the mounting bracket and we're going to put the bracket back on the car. So we're going to take the bracket, lift it up in here the way it was, like this. Catch the bolts. 
do the knuckle itself. And you want to catch both of the bolts in there first before you tighten anything up. And tighten them in by hand as far as you can. There is torque specs on here that these need to be torqued in. You don't have to go crazy because if you don't have a torque wrench you can just tighten it tight and you'll be fine. Uh, we'll look it up and see what the torque specs are and tighten these up. All right, now we're going to tighten up the bolts. Remember, they were the 17 millimeter. We're going to snug them down. Same thing here. Here. Okay. Now, you want to make sure if you're replacing your mounting hardware, at this point, you want to make sure that your mounting hardware is not touching into the rotor. But you remember we are using the old hardware over again so we're in good shape with that. We don't have to worry about it. But if you're putting new hardware on, make sure that you have some space between here, the rotor, and the hardware. It's not touching into it. Okay? Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our brake pads. We are going to put a little bit more lubricant on the pads here. On both. Like this. Just a little bit, doesn't have to be a lot. Same thing here. And now this brake pad goes into here, like that, and it just pushes all the way in, like that. Again, we're going to do the same thing here and here. Spread it around. Right? And now the brake pad only goes in one way goes in with the rounded part facing into the rounded part here. We'll take this and put it in here like this, push it in, and it slides all the way in just like that. All right, now let's take our caliper and we'll put our caliper back on. Now sometimes, and that's the case here, you see this piston is sticking out just a little bit right here? This piston didn't push back in all the way. It was in most of the way, but not all the way. So this now will not fit over the top here. It's not in far enough. So what we're going to do now, let me get my tool and I'll show you real quick. There's lots of different tools that you can use to push this piston back in. The tool that I'm using is one that I've had for a long time. I don't even know if you can get this anymore. This tool was made by Snap-on, but there is lots of other tools that you can get. What we're going to do is we're going to put the brake pads into the caliper like this. Get some light in here so you can see, hopefully. And you open these up, you put the tool in here like this, and then you turn the tool and it pushes that piston back in. I will put a link in my description down below to my Amazon store, and I will put a couple of recommendations in there for this tool so that you can, uh, like I said, you won't find this tool but you will see other tools that we use at the same time. So I'll put a link down below on my store. Check it out and you'll see what it looks like. All right, now you see that piston is pushed all the way back in now. The piston is back into the bore as far as it'll go. So now we're going to take the tool back off. Take the tool out, take the brake pads out. And now wherever this brake pad is going to touch up against the caliper here. You see right in this area right here? And back over here, it's going to touch the brake pad here, and this part is going to touch back over there. What I normally do is take the lubricant, put a little bead of lubricant here and here, and then we'll just rub it in with our finger, just like that. And we'll do the same thing over here, because this piston is made of metal, and the caliper itself is made of metal, right? So we just put a little bit of silicone like that, and then we slide it back in over here. Now remember what I told you about this mounting bracket up on top, the slide pins? They have to be a certain way. Well, it's the same thing with the bottom pin here, too. It needs to have that bracket turned sideways so that it fits in there just like this. And now we'll catch our bolt. We're not going to tighten it in. It's just going to be loosely for now. Catch it like that. Now remember what I said, if, if, this pin, if this pin was turned sideways like that, 
You see how it hits into it here? And it doesn't go in far enough, so I can't get the bolt to screw in. It doesn't screw in. But if you take this and you rotate it so that it's flat like that, then I can screw this right in. See? Okay, so make sure that this is in here, there, and here, and I will tighten it up. Remember, that was a 14 millimeter. We're going to snug it down. I'm not going to tighten it yet, just snug. Same thing over here. Like I said, make sure it's not touching. So we just turn it like that. And now we can snug it down like that. We'll come back up here to this one like that. And that's it. The brake job is now finished. Um, I, I meant to, to mention to you also, make sure when you take this off that you don't accidentally bend this backing plate and come in contact with the rotor because if you bend this in and it touches the rotor, you'll get a squealing noise. All right, so let's recap what we did. Um, we took our brakes and rotor and everything off. We cleaned up the hub right underneath here where the brake rotor is going to go back on. We temporarily screwed a nut onto here with the, uh, the lug nut to hold the rotor in place while we were working. Now, of course, we can take this off and we'll use this for the other side. All right, we put our mounting bracket back on. We screwed in our two 17 millimeter bolts here and here. We torqued them down. We then put our new uh, lubricated the hardware clips itself. If you were changing the clips, you would have changed them at this point, but we just lubricated them. We put our uh, uh, lubricant on the piston itself and the mounting ear of the uh, caliper. And then we put in our, our 14 millimeter bolts here and here. We made sure that they lined up properly right here. And then we screwed it in, tightened it up, and that's it. We're all set. We, uh, we are going to go over, we are going to step over to the other side, and we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side, and then we're going to go to the back and do the backs. Uh, so if you're watching for the rear brake, stick around. I'll put it on this video. If not, when you get in the vehicle, you're going to step on the brake. You pump the brake a couple of times. The brake pedal is going to go to the floor, which is perfectly normal. You'll pump it usually two or three times, and that brake pedal will come back up. What's happening is the piston right here is pushing back out and coming in contact with that, uh, that uh, brake pad and also with the rotor itself. And if you pump it up, you'll be fine. Uh, you will notice a little bit of burning or smoking coming from the wheel, which is absolutely normal. All right, that's it. We're all set. All right, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. And if you're sticking around for the back, give me a minute. We'll get this front here done, and then we'll go back and we'll get the rear brakes done as well. They are uh, drum brakes in the back, just so you know. All right, see you soon.